Hi everyone, welcome back to the Village Academy and welcome back to Introduction to Programming using Java. Continuing the topic about multi-dimensional arrays, in the previous video we saw that we can have arrays with two dimensions, that the first, the base array, will always be a reference to the array that we are going to define in the second bracket size. So basically here we have the base array, two positions, two positions, and then each one of these positions it's pointing, it's referencing another array. And this array that we are referencing, they will have three spaces, three positions, size three, index up to two, uh, because this is what we defined here. So this is just arrays of two dimensions, uh, sorry, two dimensions. And then if you want, you can have arrays with more than two dimensions. Uh, technically, you can have as many dimensions as you want. For example, I want a, an array with three dimensions. And then it would be something like this. Let's change it here to two and have it to two as well. So basically when you do this, what are you doing? You are creating the base array. So you have the base array here. What's the size of the base array? The size is two. And then I'm saying that this, each one of these positions is referencing another array. So basically each one of these positions is referencing another array. So basically we just have something like this. But then I'm saying that each one of these two positions here, each one of the positions that we have here in the second part, also is referencing another array. And then it would look like something like this. So the first array, it will have a reference to this array. So basically, this is what I have to remember. The last part is the part where your type will be used. So this one is also having a reference to new arrays. So new arrays. And only then these ones will be actually some value. So if you take a look here and here, they will have the values that you defined your array. For example, integer. So just random values. So this is what I have to remember. You can have as many dimensions as you want and then from these dimensions you have to draw if you are not feeling comfortable just draw that we will understand how it's working okay so now that we understand how it works and we saw a little bit about how we can initialize let's see how we can actually make this a little bit more automatic because we are working with algorithms and in the end we just want to have this uh, automatically done for us as much as possible so come here out insert Java class and then multi arrays zero two. Okay, so let's create an array of integers. I'm um, one two dimensions, and then I'm going to say that this is multi array, and then new integer. We can start with two two. It means that each one of the positions that we have in the base array, the first array, will have a reference to another array with two, uh, with size two. Okay, so how can we actually uh, initialize that? Well, remember, if you have multidimensional arrays, and you go back to the previous exercise here, you will see that we have two different, uh, let's say, variables that will need to be incremented by one. So the first one, will have to stay zero until you go over every one of the, the other positions. If we go back here to page eight, so we have the first one. So I'm starting with zero and then I'm going with one, two, three. If this is a matrix, then you can see I'm with position zero and then I'm going to go one, two, three, and then position one, and then one, uh, zero, zero, one, one, two, two. So basically I have to hold one and keep incrementing. Now, we saw that somewhere. If you look at the exercise that we did before, we have exercise with four, and basically this is what we have to do. If you press Ctrl Shift F10, you will see here that we have almost the same for this. So we have one that keeps the same, and we have another one that will keep iterating uh, one by one until it changes again, and then we increment by one. So basically, this is what we have to do. Every time you see multidimensional arrays, it's almost 100% sure that you have to use 
at least two fours. So you have three dimensional arrays. You have to use three fours uh, and so on. Kind of kind of nested uh, fours like we did here in this exercise four zero three. Okay, so let's uh, do this. Let's create here four. Now for i, so starting with zero, and then what's the size? The size is multi-array. So let's do this. Let's first initialize because sometimes uh, it's easier for you to show the result than to put something inside. So let's call here multi-array. And let's start here, zero, zero. And then let's start with zero. Then let's do this, zero, 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 one. Remember, since the size is two, the index will be one, the maximum index. It's always the size minus one. And then one, zero, one, one. Right, now let's print this because there is a thing that you have to be very careful when you are printing. Uh, actually, let's start with two, three, the same way as we have here, because then we can see exactly what's happening. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's go back here. Then we'll, let's press Ctrl D here, and then select here, Ctrl D. So zero, 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 one, zero, two. Since the size is three, the index will be up to two. One, zero, one, 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 two. And then zero, one, two, three, four, five. Now if you come here, uh, now we're starting with one, one, two, three, four, five, six. Do the same, one, two, three, four, five, Six. Okay, now let's print this value. Now I need to iterate over everything. So what is the size that I have to iterate over here? Now since we have to start from the base array, the size is the base array. So I can call here multi-array dot length. Every time you call multi-array dot length, it's going to have the base as reference never 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 the the size of the second dimension always be the first dimension the base array so if you're not sure what should you do south multi array dot the length and then you execute the program and you will see here size 2 if i increment this to 5 control shift f10 you will see that this is 5 so basically this is the one being used okay so now that we know for sure that this is the value that we need now we need to go over what each one of the positions that we have here. So what should we do here? So since I know that the first iteration will go over up to two, now I need another four. If you type four i, it will change automatically to j. Okay, so now here is the thing. Until when should this j keep going on? If you go back to the draw, you will see I have i. So basically, this is i. It will go up to 1, 0, and 1. And then this is j. Now j, lowercase. Now j will have to go 0, 1, 2. So basically, the size should be lower than 3, less than 3. So here we are going to do the 3. First, let's add 3 like this, and then we are going to see how this is going to affect later. Now let's just print something here. Um, I'm going to teach you something new in the next video that will, is going to make our strings a little bit better to understand, because now I want to do something like this, and you are going to see that this can be very difficult to, to understand. So we have i, but I also want to have j here. So j plus, then you close. So position i, position j, and what's the value that I have? Now the value that I have is, I will get here, multi array, multi array, position i and j. Okay, let's see. Control Shift F10. So as you can see, zero zero one zero zero uh, zero one two, and so on. Basically, they are matching exactly what we have here. So as you can see, 
the first part is i. So i is fixed until j goes over what we defined here. Basically less than 3, up to 2. And then once it finishes, it go back. So if you don't understand what's happening, just put a breakpoint, shift f9, and then you go one by one. You can see here i is 0, and then j is 0, j is 1, j is 2, j is uh, after the 3 evaluates to false, it comes back to i, i will be 1, and again, 0, 1, 2, and then it goes back to i. So it will keep going until the both of these evaluations is false. Okay, so what's the problem here? The problem is that this number here is fixed. So we know hard-coded is not a very good idea, because if I change here to 4 or 5, then, oops, we have a problem. We have to change here as well. So how can we actually use the correct version? Because if I do this, let's see what happens if I just copy multiarray.length. You know already that this guy will be 2. So if you run Ctrl Shift F10, you will see that we are missing some data here. So we should go to 0, 2. Hmm. So basically what you have to do is get the length of the reference of the array. So basically, if you look at the, the picture, what's the size that the second iteration should go? The size should be the, the size that this position, the size of the array, of the, that this position is having a reference. Basically, what's the size here? 3. And how do I get this array reference? Well, the reference is basically position i, position 0. So what I have to do here is the following. Multi array and the position i dot length. So basically, when you see this, when you see multi array position i, i for the first iteration will be 0. And then when you look at here, what is the size of the array that the position 0 is having a reference? Well, it's 3. Then it will be 3. Control Shift F10. So as you can see here, we have everything correctly set. So every time you have this, if you had 2 by 2, it would work uh, even if you do something like this because the value is the same. But you have to be careful and always use the i here. So it doesn't matter the size of the array that uh, your base array is having reference, it will always pick up the new value. So if I add here 4, remember, it will initialize with 0, whatever we don't put value. That's why I, we have here 0, 3, 0, uh, 1, 3, 0. And you can put here even more, you can put 10, and you don't have to change anything because your algorithm is ready to pick up the values based on your condition. Okay, so for that video, that's it. In the next video, let's use the same exercise, but instead of putting something like this, hard-coded, we are going to uh, ask for the values uh, directly to the user. So, see you in the next video. Bye-bye.